Yo, the sample based community is getting blessed this year. I chopped up a sample here in Serato sample, and I'm gonna use Loop Mix like live with it, and I'll use like the remix uh, area as well with the sequencer. Pretty sure you're asking the same question that I had to ask. Does it time stretch? So we're using the loop right here from this pack, which is from 16levels.com and it's called Lords of Funk Sampling Drum Kit. The link will be in the description box. And what I'm gonna do here is go to play mode because if I'm in sequencer mode, it will not play even if I'm playing track number one. And even if I hit all, which represents playing all six tracks that you have access to, nothing will happen. So let's go to the keyboard and start stretching. The answer is yes. So let's talk about it some more. Loop mix in itself has two different play modes. So the first play mode will not play if you have it like this because it's controlled by the sequencer hence this play sign now if i press play it will play but if i hit this keyboard sign and i press down i can play it no matter what you also have a mixer which clearly does this it turns down the volume and you can double click on the parameters so that you can reset those parameters so I will go ahead and go back to the original BPM that works for it. And then we'll go to lock. So lock, that means, to be honest, I don't know what it means, but I'm gonna guess that it locks the parameters as you choose. But I do know that this refresh button right here just resets everything back to normal. This diagonal hamburger menu represents randomization, which is represented on the different elements that you can flip in loop mix. But if I was to hit this button right here, this big red button, much like all of Audio Modern's plugins, it will randomize. So if I flip it again, and you also have undo and redo. So if I undo it, it will undo what I did. And if I hit redo, it'll redo what I did. And I like that so far. What I will do in this instance here is show you some of the other features, which is freezing. And it will randomly generate. You can also choose to export what you have done, but let's get into the middle part, which is the most important part. So the first one that you have access to is the sequencer. So if I was to choose, let's choose that same loop again, and then stay in all, we hit random, then you start to see that it took different parts out of that sequence. So And things get more interesting. You can also control the BPM with the, all these parameters right here and do funky things with this and time stretch over here in the middle, which is represented no matter where I go and it will just change accordingly. Now we have a rearranger, which is pretty cool as well. And you can choose to rearrange either or any way that you want, or you can do all. So let's go ahead and do all and rearrange and you can see that it rearranges in itself. What I do, will do is go to rearrange and then I will click on it so you can see a better representation in which you can rearrange those different parts of the loop. And once you do the rearrangements, you can see that it rearranged the loop in itself. Let's go back to sequence and then we'll just go back into all and then we will select one eighth, go back to rearrange. Re 
Reverse, pretty simple and sweet. If we hit it, it will add reverses to it. You can control it and so forth and choose which parts you want to reverse. So let's reverse some parts. The next one is density. And if I was to go ahead and press that, you can control some glitching. You can control them by grabbing these parameters. And now I'll just add that. And it's kind of crazy. If you go to volume, it just controls the volume. So if you have a part that's a little louder than you don't want, then you can control that as well. And you can turn on these different modules. And last but not least, there is pitch, which you can control chord progressions as well. So if you have anything melodic, you can change it up, you can format it and do different variables. And it's important to, that you look and see what you can do within the density and you can change the maximum and minimum of them all at once. Let's get to the Nick grid of this thing and add some more loops so you can see the true potential of loop mix for what it is. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and grab some more stuff. So I'm gonna go over here to sequencer and I will just continue to combine. So this is pretty cool because you get a, a good mixture of any of the loops that you want. And you know, if you randomize, you can see that the highlighted parts are the parts that will play within that. So let's go ahead and play all those together. Pretty cool, right? Now, let's talk about the remix section. So the remix section is interesting as hell. So if I was to go up in the octave on the keyboard, you will see that there's nothing playing right now, or at least right here. But if I hit this re remix and generate, you have different patterns. And you can play along hand with them. So to get a good representation on the keyboard of what I'm doing, I'm just changing stuff up. So to get a good representation, let's check on the keyboard and I'm remixing on the fly. Now, how would that sound musically? Hmm. So I grabbed this sample and then I chopped it up. It is this sample. Again, it will be in the description box along with this plugin because I know you're gonna get it. But yeah, so I just did that and then this did some loop mixed stuff. Like I, I literally did some basic shit and came up with something pretty decent. Like that, this doesn't even sound like that. And yeah. So I had to find out if you could chop samples using loop mix and some of the results were pretty decent, some not so much. Dragged and dropped the same sample from Colors from CMP and put it in there in on four tracks, of course. But that's what I mean by that. And what we're gonna do here is just go through some of the parameters like sequence. Uh, we know we want some of that stuff. And then we're gonna go to rearrange, rearrange some stuff and just keep on doing it until we have something. We could even choose to do min max so that you know we can further flip it and it looks like it's gonna go crazy now. Uh, we're gonna go to reverse, turn it on, randomize. Let's just keep randomizing and let's change the min max to like five. And yeah, we got some reverse stuff. Let's go into density and we have a min max that's pretty good. Uh, we can use fixed, of course, and then that will you know, make it fixed to like two. And then we're not gonna mess with volume, uh, but we are gonna go back to sequence and then pitch it down so it's not the same uh, as it would be played and then press it, play on it. So it's okay the way it is now, but that's where I wanna talk about the remix feature again. So we're gonna go ahead and play with Remix. I'm gonna go over here to Generate. And once we generate, we'll see what it's really about. Mm -hmm. 
So tell me how you feel about it. I definitely want to hear from you guys per usual in the comments, but I definitely want to weigh in with my hot takes. So I'm going to start off with a con this time instead of pros. So a con, I would probably say maybe a filter section, not so much on the module part, but just as a extra added effect so you can filter out you know, certain frequencies, maybe low pass, high pass. It doesn't have to be too complex. And I think you have a pretty decent plug-in altogether, which again, as you can see, I'm very sample influenced right now these days. It does the job very well, especially if you're trying to mesh in and create more stuff. The more drum loops or loop percussion loops or whatever you have to your access, the better this plugin will be for you. And trust me, this thing can do a lot for sound design and just for music altogether, conceptual wise. It's probably one of the strongest plugins that I reviewed this year. And thank God that it came out around this time. 